trying to think of the artist. What's his name? This painting. I stood, and the guy even let Kim and I just come right up close and look at it. And the artist that he always put his face in the painting somewhere. Which one was that? Huh? No, it's famous artist. Anyway, I'll I'll remember it. Do what? Anyway, forget that. So this little painting was about this big, and it was on this, this man's wall, and Kim and I, he said, no, go and get up close to it. And he said, see if you can find his face. And sure enough, we did. And, he, and, I, and I said, uh, what's that worth? He said, about 300000 I went, oh, I'm not, I'll move back, you know. My gosh. And he had several of them. They're one of a kind. They're priceless. You're one of a kind. You're priceless. And in God, he's here. That, that, that right there should set you free. God knows where you're at. He's not here to condemn you. He's here to love you. He's here to walk with you. He wants to come closer. If you've got sin in your life, repent, move on. He's here. Here's a beautiful scripture out of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. And seven, I want to read this real quick. Don't be pulled into different directions or worried about a thing. Everybody say, don't worry about a thing. Now, how does that happen? Be saturated in prayer throughout the day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Stay in that spirit of gratitude. Why? Because it creates the atmosphere of victory around you. Man, get that song we sung today. I I listen to that quite often. It's a beautiful song of gratitude. Live in the gratitude. Change the atmosphere of oppression and depression or whatever is clouding your mind. Begin to worship and begin to be thankful for what God's done in your life. And it moves the presence of God. And then listen to the next thing he said. Tell him every detail of your life. Lay it all out before him. Your problems, what you think. I don't care what, if there is any type of jealousy or things that are going that you know it's challenging you. Lay it out before the Lord. Ask him for his grace. Ask him for help. If you're struggling to love someone, and we all have that, pray for the grace of God to come upon you to love that person. And bless that person. We're being conformed into his image. The way that happens is giving him every detail. How many know he knows it anyway? You're not hiding anything from him, so you might as well be honest. Then God's peace, wonderful peace that transcends human understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. Lay it out before him. But once you've laid it out, ask the Holy Spirit to give you a scripture, something that you can hang your faith around, and trust him for anything in your life. I had the absolute privilege back in about 84, 85. I was in my mid-20s, probably about 26, 27 And I was on a trip with 30 pastors all through Asia. And I had the privilege to go to South Korea and to go to Dr. David Yonggi Cho's church, largest church in the world, one million people in his congregation. And I remember when when I was there, he had several auditoriums. He had one, and that's the one we were at. It would it would hold 10,000 people. He had seven services on Sunday. And so you had to line up, and there was one service that the Americans or others could come because you put on earphones and someone would be translating in English while they were speaking in Korean. And so we had the we, we got there. We all lined up. And I'm going to tell you, the Koreans, they're like ants. I'm not kidding. I mean, once the doors were open, they were crawling all over you to get to their seat. Now, thank God we had, uh, we had reserved uh, seating. So we, we, we got up, 
And uh, we got in there, 10,000 people got out, 10,000 people got in. And then they had another 10,000 in overflows, and they had another church that held 20,000 somewhere else that had seven services a day, and they were they were in a cell-type ministry that was the first ever, and it was just mo- the most incredible uh, church. But they were so big in prayer, they had every Friday night, they had all-night prayer. And they and I'm telling you, those people knew how to pray. When when I was sitting there, they had a time in the service. And matter of fact, it was very organized. But they had this this segment, probably about ten minutes, that they had for prayer. And so the man began to speak and say, "We're going to all stand in just a minute. Here are some areas we're going to hit in prayer." And he said, now let's stand and pray. And it was like a gun going off. Now in Korea, when they pray, they do it very similar to the Jews at the Wailing Wall. They all rock. This is the way they pray. And so you've got 10,000 people. And when I mean rock, honey, they're rocking. I mean, they're like this, just, whoa. I mean, just, and it just, the roar. And I'm sitting there, this guy, I'm, I'm, I'm seated right behind, but beside this Korean guy. And I just had to sit and watch him. And he was just all the intensity and all the fervency and 10,000 people. And it was just the roar of their prayer. And the only way they can settle it or calm it down when it's time to move on, he actually pulled up this big gong and he grabbed it and he goes, boom. And everybody heard it and they calmed down. Otherwise, they just go forever, you know. But the intensity and the fervency, man, so touched my heart. Kim and I, right after that, had the privilege to go to uh, Virginia, and we were there for like three days, and we heard Dr. Cho speak. And as we heard him speak, his testimony was amazing. He was a teenager during the, the Korean War, and he said he watched as North Korea and China were overtaken South Korea. South Korea was going to fall. And he said the prime minister called all the pastors together, and they had been communicating with MacArthur, General MacArthur. And the prime minister called all the pastors together, and Dr. Cho, as a young teenager, his pastor was there and told everything that happened. And the prime minister told him and said, we're in the middle of typhoon season, General MacArthur said he'll send the B-17s in, but the problem is they can't do anything with the weather. Something's got to happen or this nation falls within three days. South Korea was gone. And it would be communist today. And And the prime minister told the pastors, I'm asking you to join me to fast and to pray for the next three days. And they began to pray, and they fasted and prayed. And Dr. Cho said, I remember in my teenage years looking up with it pouring down, raining for the, 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 the day number one, day number two, while they were fasting and praying, the, the typh- monsoon season, it just weather and everything else. And he said, all of a sudden, it's just like God just parted the sky. And he said, and he looked up, and the skies were filled with B-17s. Thank you.